All right, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Sunday. Uh, Sunday, yes. I was going to say Saturday. It'd be nice to repeat the weekend. It is Sunday, November 24th, 2024. Man, goodness. I'm wanting to say 2025. It's getting awfully close here. About 11.24 a.m. here, California time, where it's uh, foggy and overcast here in Northern California. Actually quite nice outside there. A lot of snow geese flying overhead. Uh, latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 3.9 South America area along the Peru Chile Trench. Overnight, a little bit of activity and movement here across the New Zealand area. Uh, just off the uh, North Island into the Kermadec Trench with a 4.7 earthquake. Uh, looking at the west coast here first, though, some further activity down across the Blanco Fracture Zone. This area has been a hot spot of earthquake activity here recently with a trail leading off here along that fracture boundary. It looks like it is adding further strain here, a little bit closer uh, to the Cascadia Subduction Zone. Of course, it's a transform type boundary, a strike slip, not a divergent boundary activity out there. This is not separation of the seafloor. This here is a, a divergent boundary zone. Look at those ridges there being formed as the uh, the plates here pull apart from one another slowly. Uh, it would not be a good thing if it happened rapidly. Uh, and there's a fracture zone here. This is a strike slip zone. Normally when we see activity out here that adds further strain across this area of the Cascadia. And today's earthquake, a 3.1, about 5 o'clock this morning there. Uh, a little bit closer to the Cascadia subduction zone. We'll check out the trimmer map a little bit later tonight. See if a uh, trimmer has been reintroduced here into the area uh, a little bit later on this evening. Uh, Northern California, pretty quiet there, folks, uh, across the Southern California area. As far as anything above 2.5 and above, well, goodness, uh, that pretty much removes all the earthquakes here from the map, aside from one yesterday up there uh, in Northern California. Today's activity down south here looks like any given day there in Southern California. 34 earthquakes. One would think that's a lot of earthquake activity, right? But these are all generally small microquakes there below the 2.5 threshold. The plates are always moving. The faults, even though they may not produce big earthquakes, they accumulate, accumulate enough strain there to produce uh, these little microquakes out here. And they really don't do anything in terms of relieving any stress. Uh, but they're, it's almost always in motion here. There's never a day that goes by here along any plate boundary where there's no activity. I mean, there's always some type of microquake activity out there, always moving. Uh, there, there's never been a time that I've been studying earthquakes out here where this map is absent of earthquakes. So on any given day, we can see a number of earthquakes out there. They're just all very small. We don't feel them. Uh, the latest one outside of Ridgecrest here with a uh, 1.4 out around the Little Lake Fault. This is the area that's seen that series of earthquakes back in 2019. The six-pointer, upper six, and then the 7.1 a day later, July 4th, July 5th. Still seeing some aftershock activity out there. In fact, when we see elevated seismic activity out here over the uh, last couple months, we saw that, right? We, we had a, a bunch of earthquake activity all over the place here in Southern California. This was one of the areas that showed elevated seismic activity uptick as well. Um, but this is one of the regions that's almost always seen earthquakes as well. I mean, it's just... It's a common thing across many different fault systems out here. So right now, nothing of abnormal activity, no unusual swarming going on, no unusual activity that I can note across the board there in California. Yellowstone National Park, pretty quiet. Let's go check out the Yellowstone overviews here from isthisthingon.org. Pretty cool site. Uh, if you want to check out the overview here of the Yellowstone Seismograph Network, Here's Yellowstone Super Volcano Caldera in the black line. Yellowstone Lake there in the blue. Earthquake activity, a couple. Notice the uh, earthquakes here on the seismograph stations just after midnight here. A couple smaller earthquakes that showed up there. Around Norris Junction, Upper Hills or Upper Falls area. Uh, looks like that may be the epicenter area for those couple very small earthquakes. Um, they're not usgs not reporting that earthquake activity and it won't be until monday they normally have the systems turned off uh, in terms of producing uh you know the the earthquake publishing to this catalog here to their uh, map one down south though that came in a little 1.4 but that's not the earthquakes there that uh we're showing on the map there on the graph 
Aside from that, looking out across the rest of the country here, Oklahoma, popping up some threes this morning. Just after midnight, a couple threes outside of Jefferson, Oklahoma, outside of Medford, north of Enid, out in, you guessed it, the oil fields of Oklahoma. 3.4 and a 3.3, literally within minutes of each other. And uh, again, enough said out here on the map, lots of oil fields. That, of course, will be very common. Very common. <clears throat> I'm still losing certain tones that I produce here. Normally, the higher tones uh, are absent. <laughs> so it's not my microphone breaking up. It's still my voice recovering from whatever this was here recently I was dealing with. 2.4 out in Tennessee from last night. New Madrid seismic zone. Pretty quiet. Not a whole lot going on out there for now. Got a pretty good cluster of activity around the Puerto Rico area. A lot from yesterday and still quite a bit here from today, including a 4.0 uh, 4 down here across the uh, Dominican Republic area. This region has uh, had quite a bit of swarming here. Uh, and no more notably up here yesterday across the area of the Puerto Rico Trench. Now, a little uncertainty on if this thing can produce a mega quake out here. I, I, I believe it has. Um looking at quite a few documents here i did on the uh, update video on this puerto rico trench mega quake possibility uh tells us that there is a uh, you know some some potential out here that this area can produce a mega quake the last time it happened um man i don't remember it's, it's been quite a while there um probably hundreds of years since the last mega quake out here maybe even more than that but uh a little bit of swarming going on there also around these uh puerto rico mainland down there now of course this whole area is super dynamic you got the uh, mariotos trough here putting putting strain out here across this area get some deeper quakes underneath puerto rico and then you got the puerto rico trench up north here north of puerto rico this area is always almost always getting the squeeze put on it here but uh occasionally we get these swarms stirring up here around the puerto rico trench that uh you know a little uncertainty though and if we could see a mega quake out here anytime soon i don't recall the stress uh, slip rate out here as far as the uh, the amount but uh, it's capable definitely uh, capable of producing some large earthquakes out here let's check out real quick uh, the I'm gonna go over here to the earthquake catalog book here and just show you guys real quick we're gonna go 6.0 and above and we're gonna go back to the year 1000 in our time travel today but even though you know it Obviously, records weren't kept back in the year 1000, but I just want to, I just want to look and see what the USGS is putting out here uh, across the Puerto Rico Trench area, roughly about here in this area right here, and see what we have. At least according to the USGS, 6.0 and above, 29 earthquakes with really no mega quake out there because, um, I mean, 7.7 .7, really not a mega quake, and that. Uh, <coughs> that earthquake was off the Puerto Rico trench here, a little bit more associated with the strain of the Mariotos trough adding stress up here across the surface area. That's a pretty uh, shallow earthquake there, 15 kilometers deep. Now, 7.7, .7, pretty decent earthquake, but notice the lacking here of the mega quake on the scale. So I don't know exactly when the last one was um, on that subduction zone. Uh, but not in our lifetime, and uh, I don't think in the last couple hundred years it's been longer than that. But there's, there is some potential out there, folks, of uh, having a mega quake out there. And, of course, the uncertainty on whether we'd see a tsunami across the east coast here of the states. Uh, but what is being reported, of course, 7.7, 7, 1943, 7.3, 7 1867, 7.1, 7 1918. A lot of large earthquakes, don't get me wrong, seven pointers are large, but it's not mega quake potential. Anything above an eight would be considered uh, a mega quake. You get up into the, you know, eights and nines and whatnot. Um, but a lot of time has passed since even some of these larger quakes out here. 1787, a 6.9, seven, uh, 1917, 6.8. So, you know, with this swarming going on here, it's very likely that we'll probably see something of this similar magnitude out here soon. Um, now, whether we'll see a, you know, a mega quake, it, you just never know. I don't know if there's enough strain built up out here. I'll have to look back into it. But large earthquakes have happened out here historically, and uh, it's been a little while 
a lot of time has passed since a series of large events out there, 1800s, early 1900s, 1787. All right, so let's look back here at uh, the activity today. Again, swarming going on here across the Puerto Rico Trench, a little separate swarm to the southeast as well. Overall strain uh, across this area is quite heightened, as, uh, as noted on the map. All right, let's see what else we got. Uh, rift boundary activity out there in, uh, oh, goodness, where is that? 5.0 out uh, in the Tanzania area. Yeah, a couple of rift. Oh, there's a rift boundary that sits out here, showing a little bit of movement today. Well, actually, that was late last night with a five pointer. Still, some interesting activity down there across the Mediterranean. Some older activity there from yesterday. Quite a few uh, fours out there across the area of Turkey, westward uh, around the Greece area. couple other earthquakes probably right around here the other four is right around the Aegean Sea um, but nothing showing up there from the USGS map a couple other smaller quakes in the vicinity as well uh, a look at the crunch zone Taiwan southward a little bit less active here today a lot of older movement from yesterday so things have kind of taken a break here with more back building of the strain across this area the plate boundary that includes the Kermadec Trench some further deep activity here into the Tonga Trench as well now Let's see here. Yeah, it's been over 24 hours since we had that uh, that 5.9 out here. So definitely newer activity out here, deeper and shallow adjustment. This area across this region, New Guinea uh, eastward here, has filled in slightly uh, overnight, and I was expecting that, 4.9 there across the Vanuatu area. Uh, potentially we could see some further filling in there across that little gap zone, a little seismic quiet area. Japan pretty quiet up there for now, a little 4.8 from last night. The Aleutian Trench, a little deeper activity up here across the northern Pacific region, 4.1 and uh, a 3.7, literally within seconds of each other. Goodness, we're talking uh, three seconds. Wow, that is uh, that's crazy. First one was a 4.1, so that's deeper. Act that's uh, that's fairly deep, 143. The second one, a couple seconds later, 3.7, further inland here on the map, but a little bit shallower. So, not for sure if we may see something out here across the area of the subduction zone soon or not. But some interesting activity. We'll watch that. Rest of Alaska up there, mainly smaller microquakes. In fact, a 2.5 map uh, absent of anything across the uh, region there. Uh, let's see what else we got. Hawaii. Not a whole lot going on here for now. Just mainly uh, deeper regions here underneath Pahala. 21. Uh, sometimes deeper quakes there in the area, indicating uh, some movement there with the hot spot. See if we got anything else going on out here across the globe. Looks pretty quiet, uh, but that's a super deep earthquake there across Tonga. 3.7 South America area. That, uh, you know, like any other subduction zone, this is, it uh, looks like a lot of activity, but, you know, if anything, that's probably average on any given day. Maybe a little bit slightly above average, but uh, Still, they're always seeing twos and threes out there across the Peru Chile Trench. Very active area. Some movement down here across the Middle America Trench, south of Baja California. We'll watch this, see if this maybe spreads northward throughout the uh, throughout the day today. But overall, Southern California, goodness, uh, you know, pretty quiet down there for now. Small microquake activity, but really nothing in excessive levels, and uh, that's all. Uh, very typical on any given day. Uh, let's see what else we got. Space, yeah, let's check out space weather. See what's going on here. We got any interesting sunspots out there to chat about? Well, the flare threat still remains elevated at about 15% chance or so. 60% for the M flare. C flare around 99% chance. Uh, there are a number of sunspots out there that we're watching rotate into the earth directed view i'm keeping my eye on this little sunspot here 
Uh, notice the close proximity there and the deepening colors indicating magnetic complexity. And those are what you want to watch out for uh, for some stronger flares. Right now, it looks, uh, you know, it doesn't look like it's flaring at all, uh, but that can change in the blink of an eye. Also, another area back here across the northeastern limb uh, that's showing some complexity up here as well. The rest of the sunspot area is pretty quiet, so we'll watch this group. Really not too concerned up here with this northern area. There's a split core here between the two. Um, but more so this area. We'll definitely watch that one and this one secondary. Uh, no major roars in the forecast there for now, folks. Uh, as you can see, green across the board means not a whole lot of greenery in the sky. In the sky, excuse me. All right, uh, severe weather. Nothing major going on there for severe weather today. In fact, uh, just a little bit of general thunderstorm activity out there across extreme northwestern California. And that's due to a low-pressure system out there. Going to bring a little bit more rainfall into my neck of the woods as well. Um, roughly about Bakers, maybe Bakersfield, northward here. San Joaquin Valley going to get some rainfall as well as we head into uh, into Monday, early start of the week. A little bit of uh, moisture coming in here. A lot of snow going to be accumulating out here across the southern area of the Sierra Nevada Mountains. So Mammoth Mountain area. That They should be getting uh, quite a bit of snowfall come Monday and Tuesday. Uh, after that, things start to dry up across the west coast. Rainfall for the southeast out here. A um, little bit more precipitation for them. And then a lot of cold air dips down here from Canada. Uh, bringing with it a very chilly cold air mass out there to bring in December. Look at that. Let's check out these uh, temperature anomalies out here. Some of these regions are talking about maybe 20 degrees below the average here for this time of year good portion out here across the ohio area indiana wow so a lot of cold air west coast going to be dealing with a little bit above average temperatures and as we put that into motion here uh looks like another swath of cold air comes in there for the second week of december across the east california ah you know hard to say it looks like it's going to be dried a little bit warmer um I'm not okay with that. I mean, December's, uh, we've had a lot of rain, right? I'm not greedy. I appreciate the seven and a half inches of rainfall we got, but uh, we are going to need more than that. Um, you know, maybe a couple weeks of drying out will be good for us, but I'd like to see some more precipitation out here. And this, this guy right here needs to go away. That high pressure is keeping everything up north, dropping the cold air down across the east and that's why we're going to be uh, warm and dry here across uh, across the west coast here as we enter in December hopefully that will change all right have a good one folks I'm out of here Yellowstone National Park a little spike of an earthquake there in Yellowstone that's going to be the Madison area of Yellowstone <coughs> excuse me I better get out of here before I start coughing again um so, yeah, enjoy your Sunday here, folks. Uh, have yourself a wonderful day, and we'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on for the Sunday night update. Have a good one. Looks like my hotkey doesn't work at times when I... Uh... No, we're recording. Okay, that's weird. Let me see what's going on. All right, take care.